So back in 1215, this idea of private property rights came about. And the link from 1215 right up until now between property rights and individual freedom, between property rights and the rule of law, and between property rights and economic security and economic prosperity, there's never been any doubt about those things. So what might seem like a small amendment being put through by a small council in a small little part of Australia actually has much broader consequences in the big scheme of things. And when we go right around Australia, over the last decade or two decades, we've seen this gradual erosion of private property rights on a number of... This is a bigger issue than just Amendment 40, really, because um, people like City of Swan and those sort of bureaucrats can come after us for all sorts of things. This is just the thin edge of the wedge, really. So um, we're really interested in keeping it up and going from there and, um, and reminding these bureaucrats that they were created for our benefit and our convenience. We're not here to be governed by them. Um, they're, they're there to serve us, they're public servants. So we're going to be reminding them of that. And um, they're learning that the people of Bullsbrook will not take this line down. I'm really proud of you guys and um, thanks for being here. People's livings, livelihoods and liberties are interfered with. <coughs> Be prepared that people who pass these amendments must take responsibility. They can have an impact and it can go as far as depression, suicide, a whole lot. Every this has got enormous impact on a, a lot of little guys that work very hard to create a lot of wealth in this, this state and are the backbone of the state. A couple of the things about the legislation disturbs me immensely. I think it attacks our rights as Aussies. It's insanity, it's totally ludicrous to, to have a, a law like this in what we call a, a free society, I think. Um, yes. uh, I, I actually asked the planning department to come and talk to us to explain how the building envelope had been put on because we had buildings that were outside it. They refused all of our requests to talk to us. The rural office wouldn't talk to us. Nobody would come and speak. They just took us to court threatened us with a $50,000 penalty and a $5,000 a day if we failed to remove the tank or pay the penalty fee that they charged. Shame. Uh, yeah. Lawyer's letters. I suffered from severe depression because of it. I also had two miscarriages through the whole thing. I say to City of Swan, compassion is all we ask. Yeah. Is remember that we are human beings, we are people, and we're all struggling just to survive right now. And you're not consulting with us, you're not speaking to us, and you're not treating us with the respect that we deserve. We give it to you by paying our rates we pay your and doing the well. right thing. And we only ask that you do the right thing by us as well. Exactly. And, and I hope you'll think about these truckies who work their guts off just to make ends. Hi, my name's Pam. I've lived here 18 years. I have a truck. I have a bobcat, which I don't use commercially. So I have to pay you for an application to keep them there. Is that right? Just another point of clarification. The existing definition in the scheme of a commercial vehicle is 4.5 tonne and used for a commercial purpose. The definition in the new policy is a vehicle of 4.5 tonne and used for a commercial purpose. No, it's the wrong. same. That's wrong. Now, that's wrong. No, it's not that's wrong. wrong. It's, it's, it's not potential. wrong. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. Now, in relation to the lady's question and in relation to her, if it's not used for a commercial purpose, it's not captured. Uh, Graham from Shady Hills. Uh, a couple of things there. Um, Pam was mentioning before about Bobcat and what. On your new amendment, it actually says licensed or unlicensed. Yeah. It also says could or is used for commercial pur for purposes. Could, the right? That's the, the problem we don't have. We have with you guys is that we don't we don't trust the city of Swan. Okay, you've lied for years and years and years. You've lied to everybody over and over again, and I'm really disappointed. So is everybody here. You lie. I can hear what you're saying about the trust. All we can do is endeavour to improve our systems, but rest assured there is, we, there is no benefit or angle to us seeking to lie to any of, any of you as ratepayers. As you pointed out, we're your servants. Why will we lie to you?
Phil's answer is quite correct, and that is you pay $135, and that is it. I made it known because I had to take a transport operator into him and made an application to get his truck. He paid his $135, and he got a retrospective fine. That uh, one of the people who put in their permit and paid the $135 for the commercial vehicle was visited by the City of Swan um, officer, and while that officer was there, they picked them up on a retaining wall and um, a patio. So if they have to put permits in for those and then get retrospective penalties for that, that's an extra $798. Um, so yeah, we'll just go into the survey results. 96.5%, um, which is nearly everybody, of the people who com completed the survey didn't actually hear about Amendment 40 from the uh, City of Swan Ads. They heard about it from word of mouth. So it's only 3.5% actually heard it or saw it in the paper from City of Swan. If people don't read newsletters, if they don't read the news... Uh, it's because of Pauline's flyers. Well, that's not our fault. If people don't read, if people don't read newspapers, that's, you know... I mean, at the end of the day, we make a decision based on community. Um, and then while the Mayor of Swan has denied that Amendment 40 will actually have any effect on businesses in Midland, for example, and that was tonight at the Council meeting that Pauline and Paul just attended, 65% um, of the people in the survey said that they'd be affected financially by Amendment 40 um, in this area, and half of these in their full-time job, full-time earnings. 13% um, of people surveyed will have to use a depot if this goes through in its present form. 29% will have to sell vehicles. And 34%, which is about a third of the people, will either go broke or have to move. But where, where can they move? Mm. You know, where, where is there for them to move? There's nowhere to go. OK. So you are the highest people in this room. Not councillors, not politicians. They work for us. Why? I'll tell you right now, people, you need to get educated real quick. All your properties are under fee simple. Freehold, it is that simple. Free. It's been alienated from the Crown. You've paid that money for it. You have the right to that land. And we are under common law. Nothing will change that unless all of you people change it and we become a republic. We're not a republic. We're a constitutional monarch. That gives us the greatest right and we need to get it back. We need to get back our courts. We need to get back our parliament. And we need them to make sure that we are the most important people, not them.